So those who are joining late, please help them out with the topic name and all. Energy balance, chapter seven, page number one twenty six. So typically, your body's sixty to seventy percent of energy is you is released as heat. Okay, it can. This heat is used for metabolic reactions also. So the remaining energy will be used just for muscular activity and cellular processes. Okay, remaining sixty to seventy percent, your the body is warm. The body maintains a certain temperature. Okay, as compared to the room temperature, the body's temperature, human body's temperature is higher as compared to room temperature. So maintaining that temperature, sixty uh, to seventy percent of your energy goes or uh, goes away in form of heat. Produced by the body. So, kilocalorie definition of kilocalorie. Uh, energy in biological system is measured in form of kcf or kilocalories. So, one kilocalorie is the amount of heat energy that is required to raise one kg of water from one degree Celsius. Uh, one degree Celsius at fifteen degrees Celsius. For example, let's say uh, the water temperature. Okay, one kilogram of water temperature uh, is fourteen degrees Celsius. The amount of Uh, heat you will require to raise the temperature of this fourteen degree Celsius water to fifteen degree Celsius. You you are just raising the uh, the heat of the water by just one degree Celsius. Okay, so the amount of heat energy required heat required just to change this one degree Celsius, just to increase the water's temperature by one degree Celsius. That amount of heat is called one kilo calories. Okay. So what to uh, like uh, if you if you require a video on this uh, we have uh, I have shared some video with previous students as well. If new students wants a video on this particular topic of what is the meaning of one kilo calorie and animated video is available uh, on YouTube. I can share with you the link. Just contact me after the class. Okay, I'll I'll forward you the link and all. So calorimetry. Calorimetry is the device that is used to check how much heat is released. Okay, uh, we have different types of calorie uh, calorimetry, direct as well as indirect, etc. So, uh, in indirect calorimetry, you are given food as well as oxygen, and heat is generated as well as of uh, carbon dioxide is generated. So, uh, in indirect indirect calorimetry, the amount of oxygen as well as the carbon dioxide and other gases and heat, everything will be measured. Okay, in direct calorimetry, nothing. Only the heat. What amount of heat the body is producing? What amount of heat? Uh, any physiological conditions are giving out. Only that can be. Uh, checked using direct cal calorimetry. Okay, so this is the scientific aspect of it. We have certain devices like Benedict's device, etc. Douglas bag, Benedict device, Bob calorimeter. Okay, these are the examples of some laboratory equipments used to check how uh, check the kilo calories released or the heat released by certain food stuff. Uh, food stuffs. Okay, if you have seen any sports video or something like that, when the athletes are put on some research. Okay. <clears throat> so when the athletes are on some research forums uh, so they are asked to do cycling or they are asked to do, do treadmill okay for an hour or so and they uh, their mouth will be covered with a mask and there will be a pipe going out of the mask into a uh, into a equipment okay that's a calorimetry so that equipment uh, judges what is the amount of carbon dioxide and heat this athlete is producing Okay, with that one hour of workout. Okay, that is also a form of calorimetry. So these equipments are used for scientific purposes. Okay, so you just have to know what is a calorimetry. It is used to uh, calculate the heat generated after metabolism. Okay, so this is one type of calorimetry, Benedict's one. Then this is the one I was telling you how athletes are put on a calorimetry. Just to judge the amount of energy they are producing, the heat they are producing, the kilo calories they are burning. Okay, so to check that, this kind of calorimetries are used. So next, coming to the physiological uh, fuel value. So when you do this, uh, there is a difference between physiological and the actual uh, fuel value of proteins, carbohydrates, and fat. Okay, for example. Not inside a human body, but if you are trying to metabolize and break down 
proteins, carbohydrates, or fat outside the human body in a simulation, in a simulated condition, okay, inside a laboratory using an equipment, using a calorimeter, etc. If you are trying to break down proteins, carbohydrates, and fat to, see, to judge how much heat is produced, the values will be slightly different as compared to the actual response that takes place within the body. For example, uh, if you come to page number 132, uh, page number 132, there is a table, table 7.3. Page number 132, table 7.3. Is it visible to all the table in your textbook? Those who have the textbook with you. Have you all opened that particular page? Yeah. So if you look at that table, there is a difference between physiological fuel value. What is physiological fuel value? You eat food, okay? And the food that reaches your gut, some part of it is obviously lost in digestion. Okay, not the entire protein or entire carbohydrate will be consumed by the intestine. Okay, some part of it will be lost. So keeping that in mind, keeping the losses, the potential lo losses in mind, we come to a conclusion that, okay, one gram of protein can give only four kilocalories of uh, energy. Okay, in a, in, inside a human body. But if you do the same test on protein, Okay, using the same uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, acid gastric juices, etc. outside a simulated uh, center, okay, outside a simulator uh, in, a, in a laboratory or something, when you're using calorimetry, etc. to break down the protein, the amount of uh, energy the proteins will give out is around 1 point, oh, sorry, 4.10. Okay, there is a small decimal difference. In most of the... Uh, differences between physiological and gross value, that's, there's a slight decimal variation. The variation, uh, the, that is the actual amount of calories these uh, macronutrients are supposed to give you. But keeping in mind the physiological state of a human being, some amount of food will be lost in excretion. Not, entire, not the entirety of the food will be absorbed by the gut. Okay, so keeping that potential loss in mind, this, this, these are the numbers what we actually use. Okay, for proteins, carbohydrates, it is 4 kilocalories per gram. For fat, it is 9 kilocalories per gram. Okay, but what are the actual, when you actually break them out outside the human body, what is the exact uh, energy which they are supposed to give you is given on uh, page number 132. Okay, just check that, know that difference, okay. So, next components of energy expenditure. Uh, or you, you should know like uh, what are the different different components of energy expenditure okay so just know the uh, headings of uh, these uh, these topics so you have resting metabolism that is your basal meta metabolic rate okay when you're doing nothing when you're sleeping when you're sitting around you're just resting you're not doing any action you're just scrolling through your mobiles and all okay you're not doing any physical activity but still but still your body is active okay involuntary processes inside your body is taking place you're breathing involuntary your heart beats okay there are some muscular contra uh, contractions going on within your body like the peristalsis movement and all okay you can't control your peristalsis you can't control your heart rate this involuntary actions do take place also to keep these actions going your body requires energy okay to keep the digestion going even if you had uh, have had lunch around 12 pm your body is still digesting that lunch by 4 pm or 5 pm okay it is still the, uh, under the process of digestion okay so what gives the energy okay that's the basal your basal metabolic rate people who have high basal metabolic rate they digest their food fast okay like as soon as they uh, finish their lunch within an hour or so they have to rush, run to the bathroom okay so that means what your basal metabolic rate is high those who have very low basal metabolic rate, they usually suffer from constipation or gut-related issues, etc. Okay. So that's resting metabolism means your basal metabolic rate. So you can see from the pie chart here, 60%, 60% of the energy consumption is spent out just to maintain your BMR, basal metabolic rate. Okay. And 32% uh, is from physical activity like if you go for a walk 
whatever like whenever even when you're doing your household chores okay in that also that's also a, a physical activity okay not much but still it is so 32 percent of uh, your energy will be spent on all the physical activity you climb your stair, stair to reach home or something like that okay walk around walk with your pets play around okay but these all things are physical activity not just exercise not just exercise okay you're taking a bath uh, that is also physical activity cooking standing up and cooking uh, and spending an hour standing on your feet while cooking or doing or kitchen chores etc it's also physical activity okay you're doing voluntarily so in that also 32 percent of the energy will be spent in physical activity then eight percent is your thermic effect of food thermic effect of food means your food has its own energy to digest itself like so we say now some food are hotter as compared to other food they uh, like if you look at them their temperature will be quite same at room temperature they all have the same temperature but the way how they act inside your body okay uh, for example can you give any any food that has high thermic effect any any examples of foods that are that are high in thermic effect yes garlic garlic itself has a heat to it turmeric most of the spices okay not all spices not all spices but most of the spices for example uh, coriander okay coriander and fennel seeds okay these are cooling uh, they, these are the spices which has cooling effect okay yeah clove nuts they they have they have it they have an innate heat quality in them so when uh when uh, when the food has high thermic effect uh, will it take up uh, a lot of your body's energy for digestion can you answer it when a book when a uh, food has high thermic effect will it take up a lo whole lot of your body's energy for digestion no it will not okay it will not because it it has its own thermic effect it does not require much of external heat to break down okay cooler foods food, the foods that are supposed to be cold in nature okay like if you are using something like fennel seeds or uh, if you are cooking, cooking something only in coriander powder and all so these are considered as cooler uh, these, these have cooling effects okay uh, and uh, some say mint has a cooling effect mint has a cooling taste but mint itself has a heat content to it so mint is not a cool herb it's it's on the hotter side okay mint is not a cool herb it uh, like from the point of ayurveda when we are speaking even curd okay uh, even curd people consider it has it has a cool food curd not buttermilk but curd okay curd is not a cool food it is not a cold food it is a hot food can you say uh, can you guess why curd is a hot food like the way how curd will act in your body what do you think why do you think curd is a hot food it's the lactic acid in the curd okay curd is naturally acidic in nature it has a, a natural lactic acid content to it okay so any food that is acidic in nature are generally hotter food okay they have a thermic effect on on its own that is the reason why when somebody is suffering from stomach ailments okay uh, you are uh, like you are encouraged to have curd rice okay something that is related to curd because curd itself has a uh, thermic effect to uh, to its body that it will not be so tough on your gut to digest okay that is one of the reason why we suggest curd buttermilk or curd rice for people who are recovering from uh, some diarrhea issues something like that okay no it uh, not when you have fever not when you have fever but, but when you are having gut issues okay like you have indigestion okay you have acidity you have indigestion something like that you you don't want to uh, generate too much of heat within your gut okay you want to pacify it at that point of time having curd is a good option 
okay when you have cold and fever naturally if you are not supposed to have curd the reason being curd is a hot food curd has lactic acid your body is already high in temperature you do not want to add on to it okay you want you should be having some cool food which has cool cooling effect so that the heat, extra heat produced uh, in your body during fever okay that extra heat could be utilized to uh, to metabolize the cooler part a uh, cooler food okay ice cream has a lot of fat content to it so it is it is difficult on the stomach okay we will not suggest people to have a uh, fatty food the main component of main uh, energy giving component in ice cream is the fat okay so uh, it is not healthy to suggest someone who are sick to have ice cream okay those who are having fever but they do not have shivering they can have ice popsicles popsicles are different from ice cream okay popsicles do not have fat content so next coming to the basal metabolic rate for men uh, this is the formula which you should know to calculate okay like uh, when uh, the, here they have given weight in uh, pounds okay but you, you can find the kilogram variant of this formula so if you want to find the basal metabolic rate for men and women uh, there is a certain formula which you can use here they have used the uh, units of measurement for weight in pounds but you can readily convert that into kilograms or convert the kilograms into pound and then apply the same number here okay so you can take a screenshot of this particular slide Then we have the physical activity ratio. Again, uh, physical activity ratio is only few of the most commonly done physical activity and the amount of energy you require to do this particular physical activity is given on uh, in this graph, okay? Uh, that is uh, the meaning of physical activity ratio is the energy cost of an activity per minute, okay? For example, you're walking for a minute. The amount of energy you require to walk for just one minute divided by your bmr per minute okay and uh, that that's how you you calculate this physical activity ratio okay so you don't have to sit and calculate uh, all these for uh, all uh, all these uh, activity formulas because the same content is readily available okay it is readily available on the online sources just search about it physical activity ratio india physical activity ratio nin hyderabad or something like that you can get exact uh, articles and exact uh, data information on what kind of physical activity number you have to use for indian population but generally go for a worldwide this thing because like what who fao has uh, published that is much more researched okay because men and women's basal metabolic rate is different okay can you guess which uh, between men and women who has the highest basal uh, metabolic rate naturally which gender not gender which sex has the highest metabolic rate yeah naturally they, uh, it's the man okay so uh, so you be keeping that in mind the labor people in the laboratory they have come up with this formula that in man's basal metabolic rate you have to add an element and from women's you have to subtract an element okay because naturally to uh, the balance is such that men have higher basal metabolic rate as compared to women okay So don't worry much about the physical activity ratio and physical activity levels and all because this kind of information uh, people have tried and tested. They have done so many research. Mostly they have done research on these athletes and all just to find out what amount of uh, energy is lost if you walk for a, for one one kilometer. 
if you brisk walk for one hour okay if you search in google about this information how uh, how much calories would i burn when i do lunges for 15 minutes when i do push ups for 10 minutes okay how much energy would i burn something like that when you when you put on the google you get an answer because people had done this research okay they have put athletes and bodybuilders on such test and they have noted down the kind of energy or kind of heat energy they are producing means when we get an idea of how much heat is produced at the same moment we will understand how much calories are being burnt okay the physical activity level uh, for sedentary active very active low active okay uh, for for uh, in your textbook there is a table which is given on page number 39 uh, 3 what sorry 139 textbook page number 139 there's a table 7.6 table 7.6 physical activity level values proposed by icmr okay and also the value is given by food and agriculture organization who and hunu etc it is given just but you, when you are calculating for indian citizens just follow what icmr has given okay that values are given in your textbook just follow that okay so where do you think uh, where will you use this physical activity levels do you remember recall any formula in which you can use physical activity levels students who have uh, attended a previous class on this where we use we where we incorporate this particular physical activity level in a certain formula do you remember which formula is it The name of the formula, it's not just to, uh, uh, no, for BMI calculation, no. For BMI calculation, we do not require this formula. We just require height and weight. That's it. To calculate BMI, we just require a person's height and weight. Height in meters, weight in kilograms. That's it. No, not even for BMI. There is a specific, uh, yeah, you... So some of you are correct calorie requirement but the, but there's a name of that formula does anyone remember what is the name of that particular formula the answer what we get is your daily calorie requirements okay all of your putting calories calorie requirement that's the answer that is what you get okay but that equation has a specific name it's St. Mifflin and Gior equation or St. MJ equation. Okay. Please remember that. Very important. Like even from exam point of view, as well as when you are when you are like practicing as a nutritionist and dietitian. Okay. You should know this formula by heart. Mifflin. St. Mifflin and Gior equation. For calculating the calorie requirement for men and women. For men also, there is a different formula. Women also, there's a different formula. There's a certain step to it, which you have to follow. Okay. So next coming to thermic effect of food okay that is the rate at which your body metabolizes a meal okay so based on the thermic effect of food is what uh, we should consume more in the in in a balanced diet okay so fat has zero to five percent thermic effect because fats uh, they require a lot of body heat to be metabolized okay they themselves they do not have much of body uh, heat component to it so they require this external heat from your body for being digested carbs five to ten percent is the thermic heat so like 
it can more it can be moderately digested but depends on which kind of carbs you are having is it simple carbohydrates or complex because complex may require much more heat energy because you have to break down that complex bonds okay it's simple it is single bonds and short uh, short chain and single bonds so it is easier for your for the heat energy to just break it down in uh, at once and protein is much more complex so you require a lot of uh, heat energy but protein itself some some specific kind of protein itself like for example uh, the protein from let's say soya bean and uh, protein from egg okay protein from egg and protein from soya bean which do you think has na naturally has a higher thermic effect which do you think soya bean and egg which has a natural higher type thermic effect Yes, it is. It is egg. Definitely, egg has a natural thermic effect to it. Okay. Next, coming to your resting energy expenditure, or your also called called as basal uh, metabolic rate when you are resting, when you are not doing anything. Okay, you're, you're still breathing. Okay, the food you have already had, you're still breathing. And the energy is required by all your major organs. Okay, specifically your brain. Your brain can't function on any other substitute. It, it has to get glucose. Brain, brain requires glucose for its, its function. So uh, to keep these organs going on, uh, keep functioning, even when you're resting, the energy is still being produced in your body to supply uh, to, to be supplied to all these major organs okay and also to all at cellular level also when once it re reaches all the uh, um, cell, cells of your body naturally your uh, major organs are getting energy okay then from there atp will be formed yeah, with the help of my uh, mitochondria etc uh adenosine triphosphate okay three uh, three molecules of phosphate and adenosine will be formed and this is energy giving component atp okay when, when your body is readily producing atp you are energetic you have energy to work on okay there are other pathways also in sports nutrition we have already studied okay about this i guess students who are doing sports nutrition they know much better than this like how atp and what other pathways we have for energy production okay and when the atp is released Okay, once uh, once the cells are filled with heat and when the ATP is released, that's when the body exhales uh, carbon dioxide, some, uh, some form of water also in form of sweat, nitrogen and heat. Okay. So this is what happens even when you're not doing any physical activity, when you're even just resting. Okay. ATPs are still being produced in your body. So that's resting energy expenditure. So this is the reason why you, nobody cannot uh, like when you're doing a cal calorie deficient diet okay going beyond beyond 500 kilo uh, cal calorie per day diet is very life threatening in kind of in kind of a way it's, it's a life threatening condition when you go into this extreme diets and all where you you just have less than 500 or 700 kilo calories you are depriving your main organs from its natural functions and aut automatically over a period of time it will be shown in your health okay so never go beyond whatever whatever weight, weight loss regimen you are on okay never go beyond 600 to 700 kilo like less than 600 to 700 kilo, uh, kilo calories per day okay you have to keep in mind your vital organs still require energy which the, and the main source is only via your food okay Now, facts, factors that affect your body mass, um, basal, basal metabolic rate. First, your body composition. For example, uh, people who are lean and people who are obese. Okay, can anyone guess which uh, which one of them have a higher uh, met uh, metabolic rate?
the basal meta metabolic rate with per unit of your body weight is higher so the person who is on the healthier side okay it may it may seem like it's not true but remember this people who are slightly overweight okay near nearing the obese uh, rate okay they have a higher metabolic rate as compared to people who are lean okay uh, so the re the reason being like when you put on a kilo okay like whatever your body uh, met metabolic rate was earlier as soon as you start putting on some weight along with that to keep up with that addition your basal metabolic rate will also increase okay so naturally people who are obese they have a higher uh, metabolic rate as compared to people people who are very lean okay because remember this there's an important line in your textbook on page number 147 when you read about the body composition read the last sentence make it underline it not for exam but for your understanding the last sentence in that first paragraph okay those who have the textbook page number 147 okay read that understand that then gender we all know okay uh, it is uh, it is tough to reduce weight for people who are who do not know what to eat how to eat and what kind of uh, gap you should have between two meals okay the way how you are sourcing your food the way how you are preparing the food okay the the different various components macronutrient component the ratio in your diet that plays an important factor it's uh, that is one for one second is people who have thyroid issues okay for them losing weight is dif uh, difficult because the hormonal factor chips in okay but if you if you are someone who does not have any hormonal issues does not have any thyroid issues or hormonal issues it will be very easy for you to lose weight when you know what kind of protein you should have, how much carbs you should have, what kind of fat you should have. Okay, obviously we have good fats and bad fats, etc. People are unaware of this particular information. Okay, so it becomes so what they do is whatever they had previously at their home in uh, cooked in refined oil everything they are having the same thing during their weight loss journey also okay so you will not see that particular uh drop in their weight expected drop in the weight in the in a given period of time okay so that is the reason why because you you do not know how to uh, make complementary foods uh along with you like for example when you think when, when you think about protein the things that come into mind is usually uh dairy products non vegetarian products soy products etc like in last class dr mittal sir told okay soya bean which is quite underestimated when it comes to the protein uh, value okay not uh, when it uh, when you look at soya bean you will not think that it, it may be a such a good source of protein and calcium etc okay so uh, just by boiling uh, soya bean and just sauteing it lightly okay just to give it a, a slight temper okay uh, you're just uh, sorting it light, lightly and having it okay you are losing you will be losing weight okay instead of going for dairy products or vegetarian options etc if you try to switch into healthy protein healthy carbs and healthy fats that's when you that's when you will be rapidly using uh, losing your weight okay so information spe specifically misinformation is common among uh, today's population as compared to true information okay so that's one of the reasons why and then age as you uh, as you become older and older people who are in the senior citizen category are when they cross their uh, 35s and 40s their uh, metabolic rate drops down okay body size and surface area and the same thing uh, when it, when we say about the expenditure of a man okay it is much more than the woman as also uh, if you if your body surface area has a lot of muscle okay you if when you have a lot of lean muscle in your body composition naturally your bmr will be higher 
okay uh, along when you even when you are a lean person okay there are times when people are lean but uh, they are very uh, like stick like figures and all okay they are very thin but they do not have muscle lean muscles okay they have lot of adipose tissues in them they might have lost that weight using losing uh, doing this fasting or crash diet or liquid diet or something like that they lose their lean muscle okay they the fat uh, cells are still in their body okay so in, in that case also the bmr will drop down okay so having a lot of uh, lean muscle mass aids in your metabolism okay then sleep even when you sleep you lose a lot of weight okay like in, in the in sense of energy but like for example when you skip your dinner you uh, sleep and you are depriving your body with glucose and on top of that you have late breakfast again keeping your brain deprived of glucose for very long long period of time uh, that's that, that is one of the reason why hormonal imbalance can can be seen okay because just near the brain you have the pituitary gland and the blood supply that goes to the brain okay uh, since uh, brain being the vital organ okay most of the energy whatever is remaining it will go to the brain depriving pituitary glands hypothalamus uh, glands etc and that's how not, not only for women but also for men okay when you deprive your brain with a uh, your nervous system with lot of energy deprivation during this long fast and all you will be creating hormonal imbalance in you okay this is one of the reason and because there is a reduced blood supply to this uh, to the to the master gland okay ideal cap is 2 and a half to 3 hours 2 and a half to 3 hours is a ideal gap but if you are if you are having small portion of meal okay but if you are having this heavy thali like meal okay like a north indian thali or something like that uh, with uh, like at least five to six varieties of dishes and then after two hours or two and a half hours you are again having something else that's not ideal okay have short frequent meals at that point of time you can keep two and a half or three hours of gap in between two meals and also consider your uh, am i audible okay consider the snacks which you have that uh, the snacks which you have during your tea time okay tea time and snacks consider them also as a semi, semi meal okay not all fermented food are good okay so don't go behind if it is fermented or not okay uh, so fermented foods are not um, that healthy for everyone we can't generalize fermented food for everyone okay people have different body composition the way the their body responds to hormones and various kind of food is different so it doesn't mean that a food that is fermented is naturally good okay it doesn't mean like that so it, it depends it is very subjective okay for some people fermented food may be their holy grail but for others it will not be okay gap between food 2 and a half to 3 hours between two meals 2 and a half to 3 hours then body temperature when you are feverish when you are suffering from fever your body temperature is high your metabolic rate is also high can you can you name what kind of macro nutrient you should have when you are having fever you can't skip this particular micronutrient during fever can you put in the chat box which macro nutrient not micro macro nutrient is very important during fever yes carbohydrates anything that is rich in carbohydrates don't give protein don't give fat that's fine people can survive their fever but if you deprive them with carbohydrates that may be life threatening because remember even when you are feverish your body is body's basal metabolic rate is so high because there is a thermal increase in your body temperature okay your body is working thrice as it is supposed to during your normal days 
okay so whatever you are having it is getting metabolized and it is been used to bring down the fever and you can't deprive at that point of time you can't deprive your brain with energy okay so carbohydrates have like starch water rice water porridge okay uh, have a glucose water lime glucose water something like that may uh, make sure something have something sweet also even if you lose taste but have something sweet but that is not heavy okay sweet but that's not heavy like that uh, something like that a small piece a coin size size piece of jaggery okay it's really good during fevers avoid having milk if, if it is possible black tea or black coffee with jaggery and all a small coin size of jaggery and all very ideal during fevers when fever subsides subsides you have to still be on semi liquid or like uh, there's something gooey kind of like dal khichdi podrigi kind of diet for the for two days okay so that you are giving a break to your digestive system so as soon as the fever sub subsides don't overload the patient with too much of heavy fat food or heavy protein food and all no not required okay slowly you can add for example when you are making dal khichdi okay it itself is a very easy source of protein protein requirements are met but it is easy on the stomach as well okay so something like that you have to incorporate as soon as the fever subsides then coming to the endocrine gland as i mentioned earlier people who have some thyroid issues their basal metabolic rate will be affected okay so even so people who are suffer from hypo or hypothyroidism for them losing weight or gaining weight okay, that's the issue because of not it's not just about your body heat but it is also a, about your hormone hormonal uh, balance and all which plays a very major role in maintaining your bmr okay so thyroxin hormone people who are deficient in thyroxin during hypothyroidism okay they they suffer from uh, low bmr rates then kids who have issues with growth hormone okay uh, kids who have stunted growth they have issues with growth growth hormone again growth hormone can you can you say which from which gland is growth growth hormone secreted which gland secretes growth hormone growth hormone i'm not talking about thyroid uh, thyroid hormone growth hormone yes it, it is the pituitary gland okay it is the anterior pituitary gland the front part of the pituitary gland secretes the growth hormone okay so what happens when the body secretes growth hormone growth hormone enables your body to maintain also to produce more lean muscle mass okay but if your pituitary gland if your brain is not well supplied with oxygen or energy okay their energy requirements are not met obviously pituitary gland will be malfunctioning growth hormone will not be secreted even as we speak its growth hormone doesn't mean to help you grow okay doesn't it, it obviously it is a main main factor but even as we speak we as adults okay um, about 25 below 25 about 30 40 and all your pituitary gland is still secreting growth hormone okay so that is very essential to maintain your lean muscle mass okay once your pituitary gland is under supplied with energy just like your brain when you are doing this long fasting crash diet okay you when you are doing this calorie deficient diets and all you are putting uh, yourself at the risk of low low secretion of growth hormone if the growth hormone is not secreted properly how much ever you fast you you can't uh, maintain a good muscle mass okay lean mass will be lost along with lean mass your basal metabolic rate will be lost okay so that so once your basal metabolic rate goes uh, goes down bringing that up higher is a very tedious task, task okay so this is the reason why we say if you are doing this calorie deficient fast and all to lose weight 
okay what happens is it easier for easy for you to gain weight or is it very difficult for you to gain weight later what do you think for people who go for this crash diet they do this calorie deficit diet just to lose weight in short term what happens then when when they stop that uh, crash diet they gain weight quickly rapidly okay why because they under supplied their pituitary glands they under supplied their brain from their energy hormonal imbalance have been created and now when they stop this crash diet and all and when they start having normal diet even with normal diet they will put on weight because the, the uh, because the body's basal metabolic rate has gone down okay so whatever normally you whatever you used to have normally that seems to be too much for your body that's how you put on weight okay remember that so calorie deficit is not always the answer for weight loss the way how you make perfect ratios subjectively okay it's not a formula that we can give out to everyone based on your physical history this family history your diet history your underlying health issues diseases etc based on that very subjectively a diet plan will be created and with the help of that diet plan don't uh, just focus on the calories just focus on the portion sizes okay and and the uh, and the gap between the meals portion sizes okay your fluid intake keep uh, focusing on these aspects you will see the uh, see the good results in your body sooner okay in du during pregnancy uh, in the first and the second trimester it increases but later at the last trimester the bmr comes down okay so most of the indigestion digestive issues because see um, why it comes down is uh, when the when the uterus is growing okay uterus is pushing your guts and interiors upwards okay so anatomically the positions of your guts intestine etc is changing okay so with that change to keep up with that change and to metabolize your food diet it is becoming quite difficult for the for a female's body okay so that is the reason why in the first and second trimester your bmi will be fine you will be a very energetic and all but at the last trimester it comes down okay you will also feel lethargic because there's a lot of issues with breathing issues okay breathing problem will make you lethargic and when once you become lethargic automatically your bmr will also come down along with that the anatomy of your guts have been changed with the the push and the growth of the uh, uterus that is coming from down with it and the state of nutrition like uh, as i as i uh, said earlier if you are putting yourself into this crash diet prolonged under nutrition and all bmr will fall down okay at least 20 to 30 percent below normal it's given the textbook on page number 149 you can refer that okay so once this bmr has give, uh, fallen down to bring that up okay you have to follow some training etc it increases by 12 percent but so you, but you will be lethargic okay yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it by the time la, fa, final trimester it increases, but lethargy, the lethargy, and the kind of nutrition and the diet tablets and all which you have that will also create digestive issues. Okay, those who have been pregnant in the past, I, I guess they can give examples like which trimester for them was easy. The first trimester, obviously, you have morning sickness and all that's another digestive issues. But by last uh, trimester, even if it increases. The lethargy and the iron tablets and the change in the anatomy of your gut and all, even if your BMR has increased, it will not be easy for you to lose weight during that particular time. Okay, especially when uh, you are carrying a heavy baby. Uh, if the baby's weight is more than four kilos or five kilos, uh, and the and the doctor has advised the mother to lose some weight, it will be very difficult for the mother to lose that weight, even with uh, increased BMR, it will be difficult for the mother to lose weight during the trial, final trimester. Okay. So environmental temperature, uh, it's the seasons. Okay. You your BMR is high during summer season. It falls down during monsoons and winters. Okay. So losing weight, if you go into a training weight loss journey and all during summers, you will see quick results as compared to winters and all.
than smoking it uh, some say, say uh, smoking the articles which we have come across some articles say that smoking increases the bmr okay and in some articles they say it reduces the bmr we have to still uh, judge a, a lot from what articles are coming out nowadays because even in modeling industries and all you see even uh, also among young uh, women okay college going women and all um, they have heard about this the relation between smoking and the metabolic rate or they have heard about it when when you smoke you you are able to lose a lot of weight have have you come across such information like smoking helps you to reduce weight people who are associated with modeling industry and all have you ever come across this particular information so this is very this kind of smoking smoking not not for stress okay smoking just to be lean just to not put on weight okay that's the kind of fad which is very common commonly associated with modeling industry okay yeah uh, one of the student here so she's a smoker but uh, yeah it, it is helping her to curb the hunger okay i i don't know about others because uh, if anyone else is a smoker or you know somebody who is a smoker you can give your examples here like how smoking helps in maintaining weight uh, loss or something like that it's not about the efforts you take to breathe it's more about the nicotine value okay nicotine plays an important uh, role here uh, with your smoking because in the textbook they have mentioned when you when a, uh, a chain smoker who is who is regularly smoking when they stop smoking they gain weight very quickly okay it's given in the textbook but i'm not sure how true is it uh, for the actual people the, the the they have specially mentioned the textbook it's a chain smoker people who smoke occasionally i don't think so it affects much if anyone else has has any information regarding the relation between smoking and uh, bmr you can put in the chat box okay then genetic uh, some some people naturally are genetically gifted with with a good metabolic rate others are not okay nicotine see smoke in cigarettes you have nicotine and all okay so when you smoke naturally your body gets that nicotine from cigarettes okay and this nicotine this nicotine helps in bmr increasing the bmr increasing your metabolic rate so in the textbook they have given this example that people who are habitual smokers or chain smokers when they stop smoking okay when when they were on the habit of smoking it uh, it didn't do any uh, weight gain or something like that but when they stopped smoking even i i guess with the same amount of calories they are still put uh, they are gaining weight because when the nicotine supply stops maybe your body's metabolism also goes away with that okay so genetically some people are gifted with a high bmr others are not the psychological state like uh, usually when you are anxious and all uh, you must have noticed that before exams or before any any situation that makes you anxious okay people have this tendency to go to the bathroom okay just to uh, defecate or just to pee or something okay Th this is a very common symptom when associated with anxiety so what it means is that when you are anxious your body's uh mechanism automatically go, goes into supplying more energy so that more of an epinephrine can be formed in your body also your brain can get more energy to think, think clearly that's what the physiology of the 
body says okay uh, the person is uh, anxious let's make more energy let's break down the food let's make more energy to provide to the adrenal glands as well as to the brain for the brain to think clearly and for the adrenal, adrenal glands to make epinephrine epinephrine will help you to do the flight and fight okay it will put the body in the flight and fight mode because whenever you are anxious naturally your body goes into this kind of reaction reactive mode okay so psychologically when you are anxious or stressed out your bmr kind of increases okay then drugs certain uh, pharmaceutical drugs as as mentioned earlier nicotine caffeine and all increases your bmi B, uh, bmr beta blockers used uh, used to treat hypertension then diseases uh, like fevers uh, any any cancer tumors burns and all okay uh, your metabolic rates are affected by these kind of diseases infections some infections and inflammatory conditions also metabolic rates are affected factors affecting thermic uh, effect of food and all